Good morning, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. And today's topic is going to be, how do buyers decide what to offer on a home? So Joanne and I are going to dive in and tell you how we guide buyers in this process, and particularly in this market. You know, we're in a very low homes available market, overbalanced with too many buyers. So Joanne, what's the first step? What do you do for a buyer to help them prepare their offer? So the first thing that I always start with is doing a little bit of due diligence. So we pull up public records. We try to look at the assessor's field card just to confirm square footage, lot size, number of bedrooms, and so forth. We review the Title V, which is a septic inspection, if there is one. And then we start looking at like-kind homes. Now, there's a term that you often hear in real estate, and it's called comparable sales. And what Tom and I like to do is we like to rather look at it like relevant sales, because different markets have different relevance, and, and homes, even though they may be in a slightly different location or a slightly different size or land, you know, land attributes could be different we are able to make adjustments for those things based on our experience. And Tom, how did we get started with our pricing model? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we started, I mean, Joanne and I have been working together for 18 years and we got really got into the pricing model when the market went down in like 2008. It, the market was rapidly changing and there was no consistency. And so yeah. Joanne and I took some classes and kind of, extrapolated our own models. And one of the things we do is we create Excel spreadsheets, which help us to derive value. And what we do is in the MLS pin, we're allowed to put in a property address. So we put in the property, the subject property, and then we do a search function. And typically over the last three months, maybe six, depending upon the timeline. And we look at actives, under contract properties, and recently sold. Yep. And we then download all of this information into a spreadsheet to see if we can derive some statistical analysis for our clients. And we're looking at price per square foot, assessed value correlation, bedrooms, bathrooms, any anomalies that might stand out. And list and to sales price ratio as well. List to sales price ratio, yeah. And we try to give the clients some models to give them some market kind of ranges. So Joanne, what happens if... Um, so what, what's typically, Joanne, let's talk about, first of all, what's typically the, the size of the range value-wise that you give a buyer? Well, so some of that has to do with the behavior patterns of buyers in the past. So if we look at list to sale price uh, correlation, that can give us an idea of the mentality in what offers are winning in the most recently sold properties. And then, you know, what we try to do is get them to a place where we can give them a value range. And it could be, it, depending on the price point, the value range could be a hundred thousand, you know, if it's, you know, a higher price property, but we try to give them a range of where we think the reasonable value lands. So let's say something's on the market for 800 and we're looking at, you know, there is average, you know, average sale price is, you know, 10% over, the listing price. Then we look at, is there, is there a particular relevant sale that's really, really applicable to this one? Is there something that's really similar? Cause I, you know, we may put more emphasis on that one transaction. Um, we may have to do a little homework before we make an offer and call some of the agents that have properties that are under contract to find out if we can get an idea of what those are selling for so that we have the most current information. So I would say the range could be anywhere from like fifty to one hundred thousand um, dollars on average, and generally speaking, then people are making offers on what feels comfortable to them. Yeah, and what, Joanne, so what would you say? What do you do when the buyer says, "Okay, I've seen all your research, I get the range, but I really want this house, and I'm willing to go a hundred thousand over the range or two hundred thousand over the range"? What What do we say then? Um, so it depends on if it makes sense, right? So I, I, you know, some things to consider are how good of a match is this house for the family that's looking at it? Yep. You know, is there longevity in the, in the house for these people? So let's say 
you know, is it a bit on the small side, but has a huge opportunity, you know, of an unfinished room over the garage that, or does it have an unfinished walk up attic or something or an unfinished basement that can be expanded? Um, we try to, you know, do a really good job of finding out about lifestyle because I think, you know, it only matters what a house is worth based on the day you buy it and the day yeah. you sell it. Right. As long as you're comfortable in the house and you, and you can comfortably afford to live there, lifestyle is, you know, we are a family first approach and your lifestyle is everything to us. So we want to make sure that the buyer is of sound mind, that we know <laughs> that, you know, they're going to go above the range, which is fine, but it's a personal choice. And personal, uh, exactly, because ultimately, if you're getting, sure. oh, go ahead. I just, we just want to make sure it's the right house. Yeah. Because ultimately, if you are getting a mortgage, you know, the whole reason we do this whole the study is that if you are getting a mortgage, ultimately your mortgage will be based on what the appraiser feels the value of the property is, not what we right. feel the property value is. And so we do this exercise so that we can best position our buyers. But again, if you decide you want to go above the range, but you have the capital, say you're, pay, say you're paying 50% down. And you say, hey, if I have to slide from 50% down to 30% down because I want to go above the range and I'm okay with that, then that's okay because that's your money and it's your decision. What we don't want are surprises. <laughs> you know, we've probably done, I'd say 350 buyer sides in our career. And we've probably had, you know, 10 appraisal issues because we've, we've put this process into place for our clients. And, and we just wanted to show that with you today so that you understand kind of what another value add of the Tom and Joanne team is. Yeah. And, and it's all about putting the buyer in the driver's seat, giving them the information that they know and explaining it to them so that when they're making a, a, a purchase in the market, they feel educated and empowered to make the decision that's right for their family. Agreed. Agreed. Well, thank you for watching Coffee with Tom and Joanne today. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. Cheers. Cheers.